Hello everybody and welcome back to episode 2 of Vampire the Masquerade. We are going to go ahead and dive right in and hopefully clear out this Silver Mines level 2 here today. I am actually going to go ahead and save in slot 2. I'm not sure how many save slots this is, hopefully a lot. See, I'm already lost. I don't know how to get down to the, the mines. Level 2, there we go. It's not a very good tail. It should be like a stairs down or something. I don't know. More holy water. I remember back here there's a couple of pretty nasty encounters just with more slotcha. Salatcha. I don't know how to pronounce that. Slotcha. That's what I'm gonna call him. So you got a problem with that? Sorry. Sorry for your luck. I reclaim this treasure from the clutches of evil and reconsecrate it to a godly purpose. Yeah, now you got a shield. That makes that quarter staff pretty worthless. That might be worth some money, so I will sell that. The rusty battle axe, no, not worth, not worth carrying around for the inventory space. Oh man, yeah. These salcha, they don't play, man. They are fairly worthy opponents for the early game. Then again, we are uh, just a regular ass human, and they are power infused vampire ass creatures. Ah! I believe the story behind the Slotcha like that are that they are vampires who lost their humanity, I think, and became basically like slaves, or they're not fully formed vampires. I don't remember the exact uh, lore behind them. Something like that. They might be what happens when they try to bring a vampire in and rather than make him a full vampire, they make him that. Oh, there's a torch right there. I think you can actually wield the torch as a weapon, I believe. Nah, it's, just, it's an offhand. Probably never need that, but oh, yeah, hit the escape button again. What do you know? I think every time I do that, I'm just going to save for posterity's sake and just pretend like I meant to do it. Obviously, I don't. So between this and Neverwinter Nights, I'm going to get a fill of RPG action in my first two Let's Plays. This game's much shorter than Neverwinter, if I recall correctly. But it's still a heck of a lot of fun. As I was doing some research, I realized that this game actually took 24 months to develop. They started development on this game in 1998. And they actually didn't get it finished until, of course, 2000. But it was worth every minute. Oh, there's a dagger on the ground. Oh man, these rats just keep popping out these holes. Give me that sweet, sweet XP. I think what you can do with XP is rather than level up in the traditional sense, you actually just get XP points and spend them freely as you get them. But I don't think we can do spend XP yet. At least we haven't been told we can. And I don't see a way how to yet. Actually, I lied. The way the leveling up works, I think you do hit a certain level, but then you get to spend the XP once you hit that certain level. Ah, I don't know. We'll see. That's that's a bridge we'll cross when we get to it. For now, let us slay the demons. Alright, we are handling ourselves pretty amicably down here now. I am a lot less afraid than I once was. Actually, if I recall, this is a relatively... 
difficult encounter here. I'm gonna go ahead and save. Yep, I remember. I remember you, bud. Oh, caught me itching my nose. You can see this one's a little bit bigger than the rest. He's got a big old bone club. We're gonna go ahead and hit him with a hit him with a holy water. Yeah. We are handling biz. Get him, boy. Get him. Oh, don't heal on me, bud. Don't heal on me, bud. I ain't gonna save you. All right. Now that is what I call effective killing of things. Oh, another quarter staff. We're, of course, out of inventory space already. Like I said, inventory management definitely becomes a key component of this game. I could actually move things around and pick that quarter staff up. I'm going to be really upset if I do this and they're not worth very much money. Oh, I almost hit escape. But I remembered. Oh, let's hit this. Oh, uh, I believe this will drain the water so we can cross over and slay the beasts on the other side. This guy is a pretty intense looking thing. He's going to get hit with the holy water. Is it draining or... Okay, it is. Okay. I just saw that texture pop up and I was like, is it draining? It's kind of hard to tell. Let's go get this guy. Holy water, bud. It's a war ghoul. I uh, probably should have saved before this. This guy might paste us. This is no cheap encounter. I think I just got a critical hit. I saw a big chunk of meat go flying off him. He is one ugly bastard, that's for sure. What a gross monstrosity of evil. He's got a little face here on the side. Alright, get him. Yeah, he's almost dead. Oh, he's healing. No! Oh, I think I'm diseased, too. I don't know what that does. I think that lowers your stats. I certainly hope it doesn't. After I kill these Salacho. Salcha. These Salcha. Uh, let's see. I don't know, I don't know what that is. Am I just gonna like keel over and die? It has been many moons since I actually played deep into this game. The first episode you saw me overwrite a game, I think I was about eight hours in. Which is pretty far, but... Ooh, critical hit, baby! I'll slay you with my righteous blade. Oh, come on. Let me say bottleneck those two. Oh, pasted, bud. Now that's what I call killing things effectively. Ooh, oh, oh, oh. Many enemies, many enemies. Oh, here we go. Was there actually. Oh, yeah, I was gonna say, is there a way up there? Because they're probably. Oh, look at this guy trying to hide from me. Come here, you walking mound of XPU. God, this is just... The nostalgia snaps are firing real hard with this game. I had, I spent so many hours in such poor gaming conditions to try to play this game. This is one of those games that came out, like, never when there 
was the start of online gaming, really. So it had these really cool persistent worlds and these modules people would create that you would play through. Between this and Half-Life, that was like my major youth gaming. Uh, maybe I will do a Half-Life playthrough, too. Just the original Half-Life, Opposing Short Force, and Blue Shift. God, I had so much fun with those games. Perhaps once I finish Vampire. Vampire will be done quick, so... Oh. Drink your potion, bud. Oh, no. Oh, no. You're getting pasted. Run. Run. Oh, oh no. I had a feeling that was going to happen. Well, thank the gods we saved not too long ago. I can't believe we killed everything in this room and then got pasted by a couple of rats. Like, just, just my luck. Come on, get a crit, baby. Get a crit. Get this guy. Oh, get this guy. Oh, nice healing again. I think when you hear that clang, is me actually blocking. Oh, I'm diseased again. Oh, God. Oh, so I'm gonna get pasted again. Like I told you, this game can be super, super unforgiving. Especially at this point in the game, too, when you don't have access to reliable healing. I think rings raise your charisma, your appearance, uh, which can be actually a powerful thing. I did the escape again, right in the spot I stopped from doing it last time. Um, but yeah, appearance can actually be a powerful thing because it can unlock certain uh, abilities for you to use. Uh, I don't need that rusty axe. It looks like items are actually randomized. This time there was an axe in there rather than a quarter staff. That is good to know. It looks like it has different seeds as well. Go ahead and drink these guys. Alright. Looks like we are rock and rolling. That rat there in my inventory actually is a item we will use a lot of later in the game. And you shall see why. If I hear over it says, plus 10 blood, non-human only, you say, what? Non-human? Then you remember the name of the game is Vampire the Masquerade, not Templar Knight running around slaying vampires. So something's going to happen. But when? And how? We'll discover that together. I'm actually just going to go ahead and save again. And I'm going to get used to saving a lot. I'm going to use a healing salt too. I like the way they just do a bridge over it. They could have just made that pop out of the ground or something. That would have made a lot more sense. Get him! Take that war ghoul. That really did. That didn't seem very effective at all. You can tell how damaged an opponent is by their name. It'll actually turn redder the more damaged they are. You can see he's pretty damaged. That was a good shot. Oh, it's got, got a big old chunk out of that shambling mass. Alright. And save. Call me Mr. Save Scum, because we are going to be saving a lot. The difficulty in this game ramps up particularly quickly. Oh, get him, boys. Oh, get him, boys. All right. We are still in, in, in okay health. A rusty dagger, that'll be... Vendored, of course. We don't need daggers. I don't think there's any dual wielding mechanic in this game, which would be really cool if they had. I would love another Vampire the Masquerade game. I never played Bloodlines because I wasn't in the first person shooter. But I saw, I watched Ghosts LP on it and I really enjoyed that. I may have to uh, play myself at one point. Alright, see how much easier that fight was? That was the same fight we got pasted at earlier. And I just walked through and killed all three of them in, in a heartbeat. 
That just goes to show you the RNG of this game. It will get you. Uh, was that the fight actually? Maybe it was a different one. Oh no, yeah, it was this fight up here that got me. Okay. Kill these rats as quick as possible. Okay, that's one's running away. We'll find him later. Oh, head lopped off. Get out of here. Forget about it. Alright, let's get this guy. Oh, I cranked me. Heal up, bud. Yeah, the act the no access to reliable healing definitely hurts you human uh, the humans early game. I honestly do kinda wish they had a play through the hu game as a, an op a human option because they add a bunch of really cool abilities for humans that you can activate in the multiplayer when you're modding and creating modules and such but they never really get utilized in the base game which I found to be a crying shame but developers choice all that I think this is a thrown weapon accuracy 30 accuracy 0 let's see what happens in all the years I've played this game, I don't think I've ever actually used the stake. So. Well, so far it seems pretty effective. It being more accurate will probably, even though it deals a lot less damage, it being more accurate will probably overall allow me to deal more damage. I mean, I'm not hating it. It only does 5 damage. It does 25 damage less, but that's, I feel like I just pace those things way more effectively. I gotta watch those side mouse buttons. They mess with the view and they're very easy to hit on accident. Okay, so come on, guy. Come on, gay. Uh, barrels to break, I'm sure. Yep. Gonna give me a long sword of smiting or something. Oh no, another, this is a rusty dagger. Here you go, and some rags. I already got, I don't need rags. Get the rags out of here. Some gloves would be nice. I'm not sure whether you wear two individual gloves or a set of gloves. I think it's just a set, but we'll see. Being able to wear two individual gloves would be some extra meta stuff. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and save here. I believe this is going to be our first boss fight. Uh, really? Yeah, it's definitely dropping a bunch of healing for us. That's usually a sign of, oh, better watch your Better cover your ass or you're gonna die. Blasphemy! Let the builders of this mockery of a holy cathedral show their wicked faces! Out, blaspheming wretch! Taste the steel of righteousness! I am Aldra the Unliving! And I bid thee welcome to my domain. Although I have found thee an inhospitable and ungrateful guest. God strike thee down, she I want to say that she's... A cursed creature! Earth has no room for such as thee! I'm just going to talk over... Voice over the whole game. With every passing day our numbers swell, we shatter all defenses and corrupt all holy places. And everyone, mortal and canine alike, will tremble at all coming. Hell spawn. The purity of the holy places protects them from thy evil. Purity can be sullied, and holiness can be defiled. The Masusa of Visalon shall awaken soon. Ye shall defile all that is pure, and leave corruption in his way. In defilement lies his strength. Purity is sweet meat to him, as thy rich blood is sweet wine to me. Die, thou damned beast. 
God hath spat thee out of heaven in ancient times, and now I scourge thee from the earth. Die, and burn far from the sight of God. I think she's a Malakavian. Uh, there's a bunch of different uh, vampire races, uh, and each vampire race has its bonuses and detractors and different access to skills and spells and whatnot. And Malakavians, I think, are good at magic, but their vampire things eventually drive them insane. Their vampire gift. Man, she is pretty immune to this stake. I might have to bust out the sword again. I just feel like I never hit with the sword. I'm doing alright. Let's crank her with the holy water. Oh, <laughs> wow. Yeah, get her, boy. Get her, get her, Kristoff. You got this. This vampire broad ain't got nothing on you. I need, I need a big crit or something. This is just, yeah, this is not working. Third time. All right, we're gonna hit less, but we're actually gonna deal damage. I hope. Oh no. Yeah. Oh, she's healing again, but I'm doing. I'm actually doing damage now, so her healing's not truly counteract. Oh no. Man, this broad is not messing around. Oh no. Jesus, I forgot this fight was so hard. God. Oh, how does she keep healing? How is she not out of magic yet? God, I hope I can buy healing potions somewhere. This is about to be this is about to be bad. Oh, come on, paster dude. Paster, you got her. No! You've got to be kidding me. Let's well, go ahead and heal. I know. Oh, yes. I offer thee no last rites. The sweet redemption of our Lord is forbidden to the likes of thee. Thou hast no home now but to the eternal torments of hell. Oh, yeah, Evan, we, we went ahead and leveled up. Faith, this is one thing you're not going to want to increase when you do play this game yourself, and you shall see why in a little bit. Strength, of course, is going to go up. Let's go to 40 with it. Yeah, basically, as you level up, you, you use your XP to make things better. I think, if I recall, perception is important. Uh, I wish I could take that back. Uh, revert. Okay. I'm gonna go 40. Thirty. Ah, F it. Thirty-five. All right, there you go. Hopefully, Stanima does something decent. It might not. But there we go, and that's how you level up. And we are at 20 minutes, actually 23 minutes. So I went a bit, a little bit over this episode, but it was just to show you guys the first boss fight. And this is where we're going to go ahead and call it a game. We have slain our first vampire. Thank you guys for watching. As always, I am Old Blue Eyes 41, and I will catch you on the next one.